Hey coders and welcome to a brand new season of this Google Apps Script course. In this playlist, we're going to be covering the cache service, starting out with this introductory episode where we're just going to get a better understanding of what a cache actually is and how it ties into the cache service. All right, so let's investigate that question a little bit more in depth. What is a cache? And you can think of a cache as basically like a mini database. Or more formally, it is a mini temporary data storage layer used to hold frequently accessed data for quicker retrieval times. And I want to put that emphasis on that last phrase, quicker retrieval time. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine that you are a user and you're trying to read today's article from the New York Times. So how could you do that? Well, I guess the obvious answer would be to, you know, go on their website and go type in newyorktimes.com. And when you make that request, then it's also going to get the, uh, the article from today, right? So where is that article actually living? Well, it's on the database, right? So uh, I suppose that, like the long way of doing this would be, okay, you make a request for that article. That request is sent all the way to the database, right? And then the database retrieves the article and sends it all the way back. Now this operation is often considered very costly and inefficient. I want you to think of why that may be. Well, for one reason, right, the database is could potentially live thousands of miles away from you. So just, you know, sending the request from that mobile client, your telephone, all the way to the database uh, could be a very long journey for that request, right? Uh, but more importantly, let's say, you know, the database is huge, right? I would, I would imagine for New York Times, they have a very large database. And uh, to make that query, uh, it's probably going to take some time, right? Especially if you have a very large query, right? Uh, it's going to take some time just to retrieve the data that you want and then send it all the way back to the user, right? Now, the engineers at uh, New York Times and not only New York Times, but everywhere started to realize that this is very efficient or inefficient, right? Um, you can imagine that there are probably thousands of requests coming in for this same article, right? This is a very popular article, especially on today, right? Uh, it's today's article, so there's just thousands of requests all coming uh, to this database and it's all making the same query and sending back the same exact article. So what engineers did is that they would introduce something called a cache. Now a cache, again, it's similar to a database, uh, but it's a lot, lot smaller, right? It actually lives a lot closer to the user. So what it does is, again, it, it holds some of the most frequently accessed data. So it's a lot smaller, so there's not as much data to actually query, but the data that's actually on that cache is very, very frequently accessed so that it, it just, it outputs uh, the data that you requested in a lot faster time. So this is the typical process flow for a cache. Uh, let's say, again, putting a cache in your application is completely optional, but uh, you would definitely want to consider doing it if you're building out, say, an application, uh, just because it, it allows for a lot more efficiency. So again, this is the process flow. Let's say that a user uh, wanted to get some piece of data. It doesn't really matter what, uh, but let's say they wanted to get some piece of data. So what would happen first is that the request would route to a cache, right? And it would check the cache first if that data was on that cache. If it is, then the data would be returned directly to the user. And again, that would take basically no latency at all, very low latency. However, if the data was not on the cache, then the cache would have to let the user know, hey, you know, I don't have the, the data. You should probably go and check the database. So then that's when the long uh, route all the way to the database would uh, take place. It would get the data and then send it back to the user. Now it doesn't stop here because after the user gets the data, then the data will be stored on the cache for future reference. So that if the, the same user makes the same request or if like another user makes a request for the same data, again, they will go first to the cache and then, then they will see the data on there and then the data will be returned from the cache back to the user. So again, the point of a cache is just to make things a lot more efficient, uh, put a lot less strain on the actual database itself and also to reduce latency for the end user. 
Cool, so for App Script, the way to access a cache is through the cache service. So this service is used to read and write data to a cache for fast retrieval times. And another thing about the cache is that a cache is similar to the property service, right? Uh, if you remember from our uh, season 12, property service, you can also read and write data to it, but that data is persistent. The cache data is only there for a specified amount of time, and then it automatically deletes, right? So this is just data, um, say like for the New York Times, like you'd only really wanna cache today's article for a little bit of time because it's not gonna become that popular after today, right? And that's the that's the uh, that's part of what re makes cache is so efficient is that you can store for just a little bit of time and then it automatically deletes. All right, so some of the common direct uses of it are to define the scope of the cache. We're gonna look at that in the very next episode. Uh, to write data to the cache, and finally to read data from the cache. All right, so before we progress into those next episodes, let's do something very customary and go into the text editor and write a very simple script that contains cache service in it just to make sure that it works and that we're all starting from the same page. All right, so I have gone and created a new project for this playlist, and I have named it accordingly Season 17. So what we're gonna do to wrap up this video is just write a simple script that contains the cache service, just to make sure that we're not getting any errors or anything. So again, to access the cache service, you type out cache service, uh, but you have to make sure that all these letters are case sensitive, right? So that there's a C and there's the S that are uppercase, and then every single other letter is lowercase. Uh, then I want you to hit the period button, and if you get a list of these methods right here, then it looks like you are doing everything correctly. Uh, if you don't, then again, make sure that you have spelled this correctly and also that the C and the S are capitalized. All right, let's just run this script just to make sure that it is working. So I'm going to hit the run, and there we go, execution started and completed. So it looks like we didn't get any errors. Plus the cool thing about this service is that it does not require any additional authentication. So we're good to go on that. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the very next exciting episode.